to another episode of the Cryptid Ramblers podcast. I'm your co-host today, Scott. And uh, across from me again is Callum. <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> yeah, how are you doing? You all right? Yeah, very well. Yeah, not too bad. Good, man. Not good. Bad. How's your week been? Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's the last couple of weeks, actually, probably since our last episode, have just been uh, chaos. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just just been absolutely manic. It's uh, Everyone wants everything yesterday or last week and... Typical insurance, all left to the last minute, and yep. so it's just yeah, it, just chaos, mate, absolute chaos. But uh, yeah, it's why uh, why I keep turning up every day, supposedly. So for the love of it, <laughs> for the love it? of it, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm in the same boat. Really. It's not for the, not for the fun of it, that's for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> what about uh, what about yourself? Good one. Oh uh, yeah, I've I've had a bit of a bit of a strange week, I must say. You have, haven't you? Well, yeah. a very strange week. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was. Uh, it was on uh, Friday morning. Um, right, I yeah. was getting ready to set off for work and I always have my uh, car keys on with my house keys and they're yep. part of a big chain thing, you know, a yep. little bit inconspicuous, not inconspicuous at all. Um, yeah. And they always go on this the hook in yep. the kitchen. So Friday morning, I go out there, get get ready, grab my keys and my car keys on on there. Right. So I was yeah. like, all right, <laughs> okay, going to be one of those mornings then. Yeah. So... I've looked all around the house. I can't find my car keys. And so I think, right, okay, maybe sometimes I, when I put the car in the garage, I leave the keys in the ignition. Yeah. So I'm thinking, okay, well, what, what I'll do, I'll go out there and I'll see if they're in the ignition because we lock the garage up and everything, you know. But yeah. um, go out there, no, no keys. <laughs> Open up the I door do. and everything, no, turn the lights on, yeah. no, no, no. Right. So I'm like, oh, okay, maybe they're in, still in the jeans that I wore yesterday, so... Yep. I go back in, I have to take my shoes off, yep. go upstairs, because nice new carpet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I creep back into our bedroom and check the washing bit. No, they're not in the jeans either. So I'm like, fuck it, right, sake, okay. Yeah. So what I need to do now, I need to go in the Sam's bag, get mm. her car key, and I'll use that. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Fair enough, yeah. Luckily enough, that was in there. It was mm. in her bag. Yeah. Exactly where I thought it would be. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, brilliant. Okay, so I get, in, get into the car, pull it out of the garage, out of the gates that we've got as well. Yeah. And uh, so I jumped back out of the car to go close it all up. Mm. And uh, what is there right in front of the garage, right on the floor? <laughs> Only my fucking the car keys. keys. <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. Right in the place where you'd have to pull it, where the handle is. So where you've got yeah. to put the lock in and, and all of that. Twist the handle and... Yeah. That's exactly yeah, it. Yeah. Sitting there, right there, on, on the floor, dry as a bone. <laughs> Bearing in mind the ground was raining, wet as well. It? Yeah. This was weird. That's weird, yeah. Because really, if they'd been really there weird. from the night before or uh, whatever, you'd think they'd be wet like everything else was. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But, but that that wasn't the, the end of the weirdness. No, that Friday was just morning. the start of it, wasn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. So, Do tell. Oh, good grief. <laughs> so, as you know, I like to tinker with my cars and yep, you know do. change a few bits and pieces, You know, make it my own, yep. you know, void the warranties. Absolutely. And all that. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I put a new steering wheel on. Yeah. And it's all safe. It's all good. It's all exactly where it needs to be. Um, and so basically what happens is that I'll come out of my driveway and turn left to get mm. onto the road. Yep. The horn starts going off nonstop. <laughs> like this. I'm like, oh my God, I'm in a panic to suddenly because it's six o'clock in the bloody morning. Yep. You live in a tiny little like village sort yeah. of thing, didn't you? So it's not like you're... It can be drowned out by other noise. <laughs> no, and it's and so we've got we've got farmers' fields off to our right. So yeah, the sound travels. So probably yeah. the next town over heard me as well. <laughs> so, yeah. so I've panicked. I've turned the car off, but obviously the horn still works with the without the ignition going. So yeah. Oh crap! Fucking hell. So I'm moving. I'm hitting it and everything just to try to stop me. <laughs> if in right doubt, panic. give it a clout. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I jump out of the car and I sprint back to my garage, yep. get an Allen key and I take the steering wheel off and then I find out exactly what it was. It was the the, the, the cable that attaches to the button in the back right. had come off and got yep. wedged and stuck in between the plastic surround <laughs> and the, the boss, which is what yeah. the, 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 the adapter for the That's steering right. wheel. Yeah. I have no idea how, how would, the hell... How would it do that without it being would, manipulated? No idea, just, mate. Because you can get the you can get it back out. Could no, you? I couldn't get my fingers in. Yeah. It. So it's like, like you would have done it and then put mate, the steering wheel on. There was a dog walker that went by giving me the evil eye as well. I'm like, oh, I can't fucking help it. I can't. I've got keys. <laughs> yeah. I'm not stealing it, promise. <laughs> Honestly, please. 
<laughs> so yeah, I had a bit of a mad mental yeah, great start to the end of the week. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. So yeah, that was a weird one. So I ended up leaving half hour late. Yeah, which is always ideal on a Friday. Mm, yeah. Indeed. Absolutely. So, but managed to get into work on time, so, you know. Glad no, to hear it. No panic there, guys. <laughs> We've got you here safe and well, Indeed. so uh, yeah. all is good in the world. What was weird <laughs> enough as well, we had another weird thing that's happened around mine, was when, because yeah. you had to get dropped off to mine, and then we came to I the did. studio. And then we travelled together, yeah. 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 That, I, yeah, I, I still can't. Can't explain that. Get my head around that. So, basically, <clears> what had happened was, um, Callum was having difficulty finding my place. And bearing in mind at one point we were parked right outside it and, and i mean right outside yeah <laughs> like, i couldn't see you there no and i couldn't I was see standing you standing out the front yeah and i didn't see you go past me yeah but then when i told you that you'd gone too far and i was like okay now you've hit the uh, yeah you've hit the garden center it's on the wrong side of the road turn around come back this way yeah and then i saw you come back yeah waving me arms about going still, oi, oi, still couldn't you, see you you and your wife yeah like, like we couldn't see the house, didn't see the, the whacking great big bloody tree on the, on the front garden, didn't see you. Mm. It, it's, it's like it wasn't there, as weird as that sounds. Yeah. Because we were quite literally, like before you phoned me and said, oh, you know, you've, you've gone too far. We, would, we, we had parked up at this point. Yeah. And it turns out we'd parked up right outside your living room window. Pretty much. So we were opposite your house. And I didn't see the house. It's like it just didn't it wasn't you. there. It was just, it was... It's so bizarre. And we drove past it probably three times before I finally figured out that that's where you lived. Oh, yeah. This is the thing. I ended up um, speaking to um, Justin, our Patreon. Our Patreon. And spoke to, spoke to him about it. And he's got a friend, Claire. Yeah. Um, yeah. So shout out to Claire. Yep. And, Thanks, Claire. <laughs> um, she said, um, you don't happen to have any mushrooms growing in your garden at all, do you? And I was like, actually... Yeah. Over the past couple of weeks, circle formation. there seems to be a couple of circles of, of yeah. these mushrooms that have popped up in my back garden. She goes, I'm telling you now, you've got Faye. Yeah. And they're, they're messing with you. They're cloaking your place and then well, taking your keys. Before you had that conversation, I had joked, didn't I, saying that you must have cloaked your house because yeah. there's no other way I wouldn't have seen it. It's weird. I mean, honestly, guys, we're not making this sort of stuff no, up. No, not it's just like... for the benefit of the content or anything because we just <laughs> make ourselves look daft. We're not that creative. <laughs> no, no, no. Not that imaginative, sadly. But uh, yeah, yeah I, I joked about it beforehand. And then, yeah, you had that conversation with Claire who do sort of brought it up as like, a, not by any chance. And it was like, Mm. okay <laughs> well yeah based on you yeah. know previous episodes <laughs> yeah. and, and stuff and i thought oh this guy can't possibly no be way. true yeah you know that'd like, just be our luck wouldn't it yeah <laughs> yeah i've got suddenly got some little bugger running around my house moving stuff yeah. about like cobalt I'm, yeah, i'll probably cobalt. have a cobalt <laughs> <Yeah>. I? <laughs> these goblin. two knobheads are diving into uh, our existence let's uh, mess with them <laughs> yeah. a little bit <laughs> let's hide yeah. this house <laughs> tell you what pop over to callum's place for a little while please <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. yeah, that'd be ideal. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do always joke with uh, joke with the wife saying that we've got moving fairies <laughs> in our house because I'll put something down and rest assured the bastard thing won't be there when I go <laughs> when I go to look for it. It'll be put somewhere else. Yeah, this obviously is you know the wife tidying up. Of but course it is. I make a joke saying it's the uh, moving fairies <laughs> because no one, everyone swears blind. Oh, they I haven't, don't know where it is. They haven't seen it. They haven't touched it. Yeah, but it, it's somewhere where I'll just naturally never put it. <laughs> So, but now I think of it. Now you think <laughs> maybe of it. it was actually moving fairies. Mm. Well, this is the thing as well. So, carrying on with my conversation um, from Claire, she was saying that she's got a fae in her place. And oh right, okay. It lives in on top of the kitchen cabinets. So you know you've okay, got the, yeah, the yeah. higher yep. cabinets. Mm-hmm. She says it lives up there, and it nicks her spoons. Um, <laughs> it takes like cutlery, <laughs> pieces of jewelry. So if she can't find something, she looks at the top of. She the looks cabinets, up there. Yeah. And it's up there. That's weird. Which is weird. So you've got a fairy or a magpie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, she doesn't hear yeah. any magpie. As I say, magpie like would be easier to spot you'd, or hear, you'd imagine. But yeah. yeah. I don't often get a conversa- get to like converse with people that are like straight up, yeah, that exists. That's, that's what that's... it is. And that's, yeah. Yeah. But it's, yeah. Quite, it's quite fascinating hearing her take on it. it is, especially when, we, you know, we believe it to an extent, don't we? Because we go over the, these cryptids and we dive into them and we try and either prove or disprove their existence and, mm. you know, and whatever else. But... To actually have an experience and have someone else of that Validate kind of it. mind frame or you know or that belief actually say, well, by the way, did you? and we didn't, you didn't mention anything beforehand, but she was like, I don't suppose you've got blah blah blah, and he was like, yeah, I have, mm-hmm. and he was like, bang, that's what it is. Yeah, 
I'm not sure that you know there's there could also be another you know explanation, but possibly yeah. I don't know what it would be because your house was <laughs> no. not there. <laughs> you were not. I did uh, not see you standing there waving. Yeah, out the front in me uh, in me socks and trainers and uh, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. And it was a clear day, and I know you're not the tallest fella, but I still would have seen you standing <laughs> oh, there God, you would waving have seen your arms the cue about. Ball with, with me <laughs> yeah. You see the glare off me forehead at the very least. <laughs> Yeah, I just have done. yeah, it's just unexplained, man. It, yeah. it was it was very peculiar. Yeah, so very very odd, very odd indeed. Yeah. So we've yes, been very we've odd. Had some muckabouts with the fate, I think. Yeah. So yeah, we're, we're treading on uh, yeah sacred tempered ground. Yes, yeah, so sacred <laughs> ground. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I suppose we better get on with the actual episode. Let's get on eh? with it, shall we? So, yeah. But before we do, before we big do, big shout out again to our Patreon. Yep. Justin, Justin, thank you very much for your Cheers, continued man. support, my yep. friend. Thank you. Um, and also thank you to Hellfire Studio, who is our sponsor and our host as well. Yeah, host and home, yeah. Yeah, so Hellfire Studios, they are Essex's per- first podcast, film and photography studio situated just 45 minutes from London. Hellfire Studio also offers full creative content creation. Visit hellfirecreative.com for more information on that. Absolutely. But as a listener of the Cryptid Ramblers podcast. You can also take a full advantage of our 20% off discount code yep. for podcast, video, and photography services at hellfirestudio.uk. Absolutely. So, and all you need to do with that is when you get to your checkout, you input your code Cryptid, and you've got your 20% off, there guys. You there you go. Like we don't give you enough with this brilliant content, Wonderful but you content. get discounts as well. I mean, if that's not reason enough... <laughs> <laughs> to support your favourite podcast, Excellent. I don't know what is. Yep, this is true. This is true. <laughs> so, this episode we are going to be looking into trolls. We are. Yeah, we've done a little bit of a, a flip mode on this as well, haven't we? So we have. This which... time you've taken <laughs> yeah. the accounts and uh, encounters and and, and what stories. Not. Yeah, and I've gone down the uh, the origins and the more factual. You have, stuff. and it was it was odd. Um, to it, it, it was good in a way because it, it kept it fresh it meant i had to do a take a different approach and mm. you know look into it in a slightly different way but uh it, it was weird and admittedly it did take me a little bit longer than usual to sort of get into it and you know find you know the flow and the, the right sort of sources and you know websites and uh and whatever else but yeah. uh but no it's been good yeah how did excellent. you find it yeah i enjoyed it i enjoyed that actually going down the more factual sort of thing and yeah. uh, as you know i, I mm. came to you with an idea for for future episodes yes, you on, have, yeah. on how we may uh present our yep. content to you guys absolutely um but yeah i i, I enjoyed it actually yeah. doing it a little bit like this so and on that note on that note <laughs> yeah. so trolls yes a troll is a being in scandinavian folklore including norse mythology um in old norse sources uh beings described as trolls dwell within isolated rocks mountains and or caves yeah they generally live uh, together in small family units and are very rarely helpful to human beings yep so troll was mostly a, like a, a blanket term that was in, encompassed many other beings mm. similar to fey yeah absolutely um so in later scandinavian folklore trolls actually became beings within their own right mm. uh, where they uh, live far from human habitation they're not christianized as well so right they're okay. not considered the devil right okay that um, makes a change such, oh, <laughs> yeah this is uh mrs boucher <laughs> hasn't waded in yet yes yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> um and they're considered but they are considered dangerous to humans because they're not christianized right okay so it's, it's still a little bit of mrs boucher saying stay away yeah. from them they play too much foosball foosball <laughs> so depending on the source their appearance varies greatly Trolls may be ugly and slow-witted, or they look and behave exactly like human beings with mm. no particular grotesque human char- like characteristics about them. Yeah. And it reminds me of the Black Eyed Children episode and the story that I found where the lad looked like he had like this, this underbite. And it almost yeah, looked okay. troll-like. Yeah, okay, you yeah, yeah. Um, which I thought was really weird that mm. potentially they could be within human form. Yeah, exactly. Because I yeah. always had this this image of that the trolls were not not the uh, the ones that sing along with Justin Timberlake. But <laughs> no, no, not quite those <laughs> but, ones. But, but more so, like the image that I've got in my head is like like the ones from The Hobbit. 
Yeah, like the, the mountain trolls the mountain from trolls, Lord of the Rings, thing, and yeah, you know, that's always what I had in in my mind. Or like, or like the British um, ogre, like like Shrek, yeah. like that type of thing, like grotesque, big, monstrous kind of yeah, a bit like onions creature. Yeah, <laughs> that's the one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so a troll was used. Um, it was described uh, used to describe creatures such as Jotun, um, yeah. or mountain dweller, mm. a witch, an abnormally strong or large or ugly person. An evil spirit, a ghost, a magical boar, a heathen demigod, a demon, or a berserker. Right, yeah, okay. Um, berserker kind of makes sense from makes what we sense. know of what their mentality was like. Well, so I can see what, how one would have influenced the other. And they drink a magic mushroom potion and uh, yeah. <laughs> put on an animal skin and transform into and that. Go animal, have it, yeah. You know? <laughs> go have it. <laughs> <laughs> have it. Have it. <laughs> Trolls are sometimes associated with landmarks in Scandinavian folklore, which at times may be explained as formed from a troll expo- exposed to sunlight, mm. much like they were depicted in The Hobbit. Yep. So. Troll, the etymology, the, where the word <laughs> actually comes from as well. So Absolutely. old Norse nouns of troll or troll. 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 <laughs> I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, variously means a demon, fiend, werewolf, which I thought was weird. Yeah, that was an odd one. And Jotun. Right, yeah. Jotun yeah. meaning uh, the ice giants. Yeah. Um, in Middle High German, troll or trolle. Yes, I guess that's what it's, uh, it's, it's pronounced <laughs> as. Trolley! Trolley! Trolley, trolley. <laughs> <laughs> also means fiend. Fiend. So um, it seems like uh, it, in, it, the actual proto-Germanic word is, seems to be unknown. So where right. its source from that point goes mm. further back, they're not really sure. But in Denmark, these creatures uh, are recorded as trolled folk, or troll folk. Um, Björger trolled. Which means mountain troll or Björkfolk, mountain folk. Okay. And in Norway, it's uh, Trolldefolk as well. Um, but also one that reminded me of you, which was a Tusa. <laughs> Excuse me? A Tusa. <laughs> you called me worse. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I certainly have. <laughs> well, I mean, you do look a bit Norwegian as well. I'd, I've heard that before. Yeah, yeah once yeah, or twice. It might, be, it might yeah. even be a Norwegian Tusa. D- well, yeah. <laughs> I'll take I'm that. probably pronouncing that wrong as well. <laughs> yeah. Make up your own minds. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, in Norwegian tradition, similar tales can be told about uh, larger trolls and the Hulderfolk. So, yeah, there is a distinction made between them. Yeah. The use of the word troll in Orkney and Shetland, um, it means beings which are very much like the Hulderfolk in, um, in Norway. And it may suggest that there is a common origin with the terms. So right, as okay. we know, the Norwegians did actually settle mm. in Orkney and the Shetland Islands, which are yes. right up yeah. north of Scotland. Um, the word troll may have actually been used again by the, by the Norse pagan settlers as a collective term for supernatural beings that, are, that they should have been respected and avoided rather than mm. actually worshipped. So... It kind of makes sense, really, that just because they're mythical, yeah. not sorry, mythical, but a supernatural being, yeah. doesn't necessarily mean that they need to be um, paid tribute to or worshipped yeah. or for there to be a shrine or exactly, something. Exactly, yeah. It's but like they exist <clears throat> and we don't really need to pay much attention to them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that was the one thing that surprised me from from kind of reading that is, is the spiritual being element. You know, you always think of them as being a physical form, you know the big giants, in, you know, and, and just sort of mm. causing havoc. But to actually think of them as a, a spiritual being, I th- that 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 was the surprising bit mm. for me in the in the origin. Well, that seems to be where it kind of splits off. Yeah. Um, in, in that sort of time, so probably roughly about a thousand years ago. Right. Probably a little bit over that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, troll later on became more of like the Jotun like sort of creature mm. so more like an ice giant sort of thing right and the holder folk they it became a term for much smaller trolls so i would say it's probably more like um the holder folk would probably be more human sort of looking yeah I and guess, then yeah. troll just as a word by itself would mean these hulking great big yeah exactly yeah ugly well, it's interesting because ones. we've had um we've had what two pop culture references to the ice giants obviously the ones in game of thrones that were the yeah. 
North of the Wall. North of the Wall. <laughs> bastard. <laughs> Lord Bastard. <laughs> and then you've got the uh, the Ice Giants from the, th- the Thor film. Yeah. Yeah, the actual... The, from Jotunheim. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. yeah. yeah Which are completely different if you compare the two. They, they take on completely different... Completely different. ...forms, don't and they? And even in, so, like, the, the the sagas as well. The, yeah. The Jotun that come from the realm of Jotunheim. Mm. They are completely different. Mm. Um, and it seems like that with regards to the Norse mythology as well, troll um, is a term that's applied to the Jotunar mm. and mentioned throughout the Old Norse uh, corpus. So in the Old Norse sources, trolls are said to dwell within isolated mountains, like I said previously, and usually as a father and daughter or a mother and son relationship. <laughs> right, so okay. it's quite likely that there is a male and a female in that situation, but one's... The parent, yeah, one's the child. Okay. Um, so in the prose edda, and I'm going to try and pronounce this correctly, <laughs> uh, is the book um, Skaldska Parmal. Okay. Probably pr- pronouncing that wrong, but it describes an encounter between an unnamed troll woman and a ninth-century skald Bragi Bodison. So, according to this section, Bragi was driving. This is driving. This is quite interesting. <laughs> yeah, he's probably driving on his horse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, through a certain forest. Again, it doesn't dictate which th- forest mm. it is within the Edda. Um, later one evening, and when a troll woman aggressively asked him who he was, and the process went like this: They call me a troll, Moon of the Earth, Hrungnir, Wolf Sucker, of the Giant. <laughs> Go on, girl. <laughs> Virtue is a goblin as well. <laughs> Destroyer of the storm sun. Beloved follower of the CRS. Guardian of the Nafjord. Yeah. S- uh, swallower of the wheel of heaven or the sun. Mm. What What's a troll if not that? Um, do you find that... I mean, the, the, Nor- the Norse, yeah. they were known for their poetry. Their poetry and their, their and creativity. And but it seems like quite an odd thing to say for someone to like prove their existence well, or they prove their worth isn't well, it it's like the thing like the, the, you look at me like i'm not a troll but he here's how i'm described yeah it's not that not sound like a troll it's like, well, I, don't, I don't know you, you tell me like it's it's really really yeah. weird i mean they were very poetic anyway they in, were yeah. in the way that they used their language and the yeah. way that they they put they put a lot of emphasis on um geeing themselves up Bigging themselves yeah, up, that exactly, sort of thing. Yeah. Like, 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 um, and it's really good as well, actually. That in modern times, with another pop culture reference mm. would be um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where you have to um, you have to take part in the act of flighting. So there's a competition, or basically right. a rap battle. A rap battle, okay, but, but with insults, I guess. Oh, massive insults, yeah, sort yeah. of thing. Like they they would go on about you looking like a Tusa. Or something, like <laughs> <laughs> or something like that, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like, uh, and it's good to see that that sort of thing is now coming into into the mainstream because so yeah. many people believe that Vikings are uh, were like these just hulking, horn wearing, just bob. Barbarians. barbarians, yeah, just like, raped and pillaged and yeah. destroyed everything in their path. And I mean, they did that, that as it. well. Well, they but, did, yeah. But, <laughs> but there's more to there's them. There's more to them, yeah, yeah. Just, They're a gentle folk. It's just a little <laughs> yeah. bit misunderstood. Yeah. But no, it's, I mean, it's absolutely incredible. I mean, you know what my, my love for the whole Norse yeah, culture yeah. thing is and like how much it's shaped our own society and, and mm. our own language and, yeah. and everything, you know. So absolutely, yeah. it, it absolutely fascinates me. And I'm, I'm so glad now that we're starting to see a lot more of that coming into... Yes, mainstream growing culture. in popularity, isn't it? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Like me and Sam, we're going to the Valhalla Festival. Yeah, I saw that in, yeah, in yeah. July. Oh, yeah. I can't wait, mate! It's going to be absolutely <laughs> incredible. That's yeah, going to be good. I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be forging my own blade <laughs> and uh, drinking, drinking from the skull of your enemies. Of mead. <laughs> and I was drinking from the skulls of the enemies. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get them first. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. So moving on. Yes. So we're still staying in Scandinavia and the Scandinavian yeah. folklore. Mm. Now, when I say Scandinavia, I want to include Iceland yeah. as well okay. in particular because it seems like Iceland has held on to these traditions and yeah. this folklore a lot more than what we traditionally know as Scandinavia. Um, so trolls have actually become like defined as a particular type of being now by yeah. this point. So numerous tales are recorded about trolls in which they are frequently described as being extremely old, very strong, but slow and dim-witted. 
and that at times described as man eaters. Right. Okay. Um, so there's a little bit of cannibal in, in them as well, mm. and as um, turning to stone upon contact with sunlight. So that has persisted right the way through. Yeah. However, trolls are also attested as looking very much like human beings. Again, so this yep. has continued right the mm-hmm. way through without any particular hideous appearance about them, but living far away from human habitation and generally having some form of social organisation. Right. Now, I did come across the work of a gentleman called John Lindau, and he's an American uh, philologist who is a professor emeritus of Old Norse and folklore at the University of California, Berkeley. Right. And he states that the etymology of the word troll goes back to old Swedish folklore as nature beings. And as again, as an all-purpose, of, uh, all-purpose otherworldly beings equivalent, for example, to fairies of Anglo-Celtic traditions. All right, okay. So again, we've yeah. at least... Again, yeah. You know, we're, we're seeing that again, that this blanket statements are going out there. Mm. But... As we dive deeper into it, we're starting to see that they are individualized a little yeah, bit yeah. later on down the line. Mm. Um, I'll continue with quoting him. They therefore appear in various migra- migratory legends where collective nature beings are called for. So again, as people move, yeah. their culture moves with them, their legends move with them. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Again, that they, they explore that really heavily in that Amazon TV show, American Gods. Right, okay. Really good series. Yeah. It's really worth a watch. Um so, Lindau also notes that trolls are sometimes swapped out for cats, which I thought was odd. That, yeah, and, different. And uh, little people in folklore record. Right, okay. So, again, it's this idea that they're folklore. Uh, that, well, sorry, that they're uh, little people mm. within folklore. Again, much like fairies. Yeah, that's weird. And, and the fae, should I say. Yeah, yeah. So, Scandinavian folklore um, believe that lightning frightens away trolls and Jotna, Um And this appears quite often in... Their, their folk tales and such and this may be um, in reflection of the the of the god thor's role in fighting the yogna right um and other such beings so in connection like the the lack of trolls and in, in yogna in modern scandinavia is sometimes explained because of the accuracy and efficiency of lightning strikes Right, so, okay. Yeah, yeah, so every time there's a lightning <clears throat> strike, it's taken out a troll, mm. apparently. So, again, I don't know if that's right. really kind of interesting. with... It'd be interesting to, to speak to someone from Scandinavia, where, well, yeah. any one of the three countries, and to see whether or not they still have those sort of tales. Yeah, what, know, what, like, what they were brought up on. Or, yeah, like they see a yeah. thunderstorm and it comes down, see the light, and go, oh, you got another. There's a troll. Yep. you got another. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. It'd be quite interesting to yeah, see if they good, actually, actually yeah. still have those sort of um, traditions. Yeah, exactly. So addri- additionally to that, mm. the absence of trolls in such regions as Scandinavia is described in folklore as being a consequence of the constant din of the church bells. So this idea that the church bells drive away such beings... Um, the ringing causes the trolls to leave the, for other lands, although not without some resistance. Numerous traditions have, uh, relate how trolls destroy the church under construction, right. hold boulders and stones at completed churches. Okay. Now, this is something I found as well. The in like the Norwegian forest, yeah, there's quite a few where there's just like, in quite a few locations where there's just a boulder in the middle of the forest, right. Like it's just appeared mm. there or something like yeah. that, you know, or like it's been there for a very long time, but it's just this round, big boulder, yeah. um, which is really hard to explain. Yeah, like how it like got that. there, or because there's nothing else like it in the surrounding area, really. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, I mean, they have a lot of rocky terrain in those. Yeah, areas, of course. Yeah. But when you just got like a single boulder in the middle of a like an evergreen forest or something, yeah, yeah. It, it's kind of hard to yeah. explain that. Um. Yeah, so again, they still, even to this day, actually, they still actually, um, there are particular landmarks that they describe as, that's a troll. You know, so I, I, right. I ended up watching, um, it looks like it was filmed for BBC Three, and um, this woman goes to Iceland in particular right. to go and find trolls. Mm. And it, it, it kind of, you kind of have to take it with a little pinch of salt, because she keeps <laughs> looking back at the camera with this look on her face like, yeah, all right. 
<laughs> really? I drew like a short that. straw coming here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, so there's a guy clearly he's very, very enthusiastic, this yeah. Icelandic fella. And he's going, Right, we're gonna go look for trolls. Come let's go, let's go, we've got to go yeah. this way. So they go to a certain location and he goes, Oh, no trolls. You've got to move on. She's like, Oh, okay. All right. Oh, deeper in the woods, are we? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. So all of a sudden uh, they, they did this a few times. Yeah. And then they come across um, this particular rock that's um, it's got the sun behind it. Right. So it's got like, this silhouette. And he goes, ah. There she is. There she is. Look at that. Yeah, she, yeah, <laughs> there, there, there she is. Yeah. There she is. And she's like, oh, okay. Said, yeah. Clearly, she's been turned to uh, <laughs> turned into a rock by the sun. <laughs> Just like, like, but yeah, of course. Cool yeah. Okay. That's then. what I always said. Yeah. I got you, mate. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you, yeah. if that's the case, don't go troll hunting during the daylight hours. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Go at night. They'll all be rocks. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, which again, that, that whole idea that there are rocks, that crops up in mm. Frozen. Yeah, the little troll people. Yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah. all the moss all over them and yeah, they've got the magic it. and everything else. So Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I found that quite It does hold up, doesn't it, I suppose, mm. in that respect, yeah. But he also um, compares the trolls um, of Swedish folklore tradition to the Grendel, um, right. which is the uh, Mead Hall invader from yeah. the poem of Beowulf. Um, a, a cracking poem. I yeah. love it. Absolutely love it. And the film ain't half bad either. What, the, the Ray, Ray Winston? Ray Winston. Ray Winston. Ray, 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 Ray Beowulf. You bastard. You <laughs> fucking <laughs> But um, And he says this. He notes that um, it's just as the poem Beowulf emphasizes not harrowing, the, not the harrowing of um, Grendel, but the cleansing of the Hall of Beowulf, so in the modern tales stress the moment that when trolls were driven off. Mm. So right. Okay. It's this idea that when Beowulf, the the or that the poem of Beowulf came about, is when trolls were driven from the land. It's right. The okay. Right. So it's the, the, the symbol of the right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I get what you mean. Um, smaller trolls are attested as living in burial mounds and in mountains in Scandinavian folklore tradition. Right. There's also a Norwegian research station as well in Antarctica called Troll. Yeah, I know um, it very well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, you did. Well, I went there on a school trip when when I was younger in the uh, back of my days over in Norway, obviously. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, well, when you was in a little tusser. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Mini t- mini tusser or whatever they called. Yeah. Are you just a big tusser? <laughs> <laughs> well played. Yeah, well, thank you very much, friend. Oh, thank you. But yeah, they, they call it the troll because of all the mountains right. that stand around the research station, very much looking like trolls. But as, so. but as we know, it's not really a research station is it no it's, it's a guard uh, it's a, post it's a guard post to stop you going beyond into the uh the, the outer the ice realm wall. that's it the ice wall yeah, yeah the ice wall the on the flat earth flat earthers out there yeah yep. we all know this <laughs> we all know this yep. stop pretending yeah yeah i don't know why the government don't just come out and say it yeah might as well yeah yeah time so, wasting now yeah but yeah so that's <laughs> what i found i found that to be that's good quite interesting really that you know there's all this information yeah. out there i think it's brilliant I think it's, you know, we've we've found, like with many of the others that we've, you know, sort of dived into, that it's not what it seems. You know, you, you have this idea, mostly from pop culture and, you know, references that you think you know what something is mm. until you actually, you know, kind of look into the origins and the history of it. And you think, well, actually, this is what it came from. And it's like the whole spiritual being thing. That that was a real surprise yeah. for me to, to, to have that, you know, the, the mention of the like werewolf. Yeah, you know, the fact that they take on human form and like they can be in, uh, small in stature instead of just like big giants. So again, that ties them in with the Fey, the, which you know we had, you know, theories that there were plenty of beings. I will say this actually, with regards to the connection with the werewolf thing, yeah, that, which sort of makes sense because there there were tales that I did find that, and I forgot to mention it previously, but that if you if a human mm. was to eat human flesh, yeah. Then they could potentially turn into a troll, right? So it's this cannibalistic idea, thing and the, the cannibal yeah, sort of thing, okay. which I thought was was quite weird because essentially that is what a werewolf is. Mm. You know, it's that idea that if you don't have a righteous path or you mm. uh, fail with your morality, yeah, then you're going to turn into this hideous creature that you know going to hunger for human yeah. flesh. That's well, and thing. interestingly, that's the First Nations. Uh, belief in the uh, the wendigo that's right it is it's the cr- the, the constant craving for human flesh yeah. and uh yeah the sort of the, the idea need like to yeah so if you if you're a person that dies with with uh, a huge amount of greed mm. then 
that's it you're you're destined to run yeah. the forest as this forever hungry yeah insatiable yeah pretty beast much thing, yeah which is fucking terrifying terrifying yeah <laughs> just yeah just a little bit so yeah um but, no, but that, that's all yeah that, that is all fascinating that and especially with the links like we said to other cryptids either ones that we've covered or ones that we are yet mm. to cover but are, you know obviously coming up quite soon so I, yeah it, it amazes me this that it's all this interconnected thing you know you think you've got you know six or eight individual you know cryptids which you know by you know attitude or appearance you mm. know you could argue you know there are but when you get down to the sort of the crux of it and you know and the origins they all seemingly come from the same same sort of thing or the, you know the same sort of regions and Which, so they just kind of branch off and they get twisted or changed slightly and absolutely it's like yeah. what um, john lindau said yeah it's like when with the migratory legends like yes. so it seems like these as people move they do spread their their legends and i, fi- I find that yeah i find that fascinating <clears throat> as well find exactly where these things come from no it is and that, and that sort of that plays quite nicely into the the sort of the, the encounters that that i found certainly Excellent. with the Certainly with the, the traveling um, aspect um, and, you know, uh, cultures and, and stories kind of traveling with, you know, people and not just mm. being um, restricted to where they originated from. Gotcha. And they obviously, you know, traveled, traveled about. Um, and to that end, <laughs> uh-huh. um, I'll go into some of the uh, encounters. Um, and interestingly, I, I didn't really find that many that outside of the kind of folklore stories and, and the sort of the legends of, you know, sort of trolls and, you mm. know, giants and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, no kind of, you know, from like, I don't know, the 1950s and, you know, some Norwegian oh, okay. guy was yeah, up so in the mountains and saw something, you know, I couldn't find anything really. Modern tales. Yeah, it was a lot gotcha. of the old, oldie woldy sort of um, ones, much like the one that you pointed out from the what the ninth century or whatever yeah the the, the prosender yeah, yeah. That, that that kind of thing but interestingly through doing the uh the research um i did come across uh, a number of tales hailing from the us of a oh excellent would, uh, would you believe um i suppose for on behalf of uh us just to give a little shout out to um mysterious universe yes dot uh, org their website um, for sharing a, an article which kind of led me down, you know, this this path. Um, so, you know, kudos to them for for mm. sharing it. I've mentioned it before. An excellent podcast. Yeah, good, very good podcast. And uh, yeah, yeah, the website. I'll be honest, came in very handy. <laughs> yeah, uh, and threw up a you know sort of bit of a surprise. So, um, oh okay. Yeah, it, it references um, a book, um, which I'll I'll mention a little later. But it's it was by a chap named Jerry Coleman. And he, m- much like you know, um, you know Barker and uh, the the Mothman guy whose name is completely John Keel. That's the one. Yeah, <laughs> Who, Barker and the Mothman guy. I, yeah, just <laughs> complete brain fart. Then Sounds I can't like remember. A band, didn't it? Yeah, exactly. Barker and the Mothman guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, one night only. <laughs> exactly for one night only. Yeah, um, much like uh, those guys, you know, they they hear of a phenomenon and they want to dive into it and dedicate all their time to mm. it and. And he, bought, you know, he wrote his book, and it was following, I think, around eleven encounters with different people um, across the United States. Um, I, th- I think from the seventies or eighties up to the sort of the early um, early two thousands or, or late. So fairly sort of recent, 19, then. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. In the, in the grand scheme of things, this generation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that was the the, the surprising thing. Um, but I'll, I'll jump into the the first one. Um, this uh, occurred in 1981 uh, and it involved a Gary Durbin of Effingham, Illinois, uh, who was a trucker uh, traveling through a remote stretch of road through the Tyson Mountains in Arkansas. Um, he was just east of Wichita National Forest, um, carrying a load of livestock uh, to Chicago. Um now the drive is described as rather harrowing uh, with hairpin turns and it's descended mostly in complete darkness, um, aside from your own headlights. Sod that. So it's, yeah. Sod doing that in a semi-truck. Yeah, bollocks, that was semi sod doing truck, it. as they call it. Yeah, semi-truck, yeah, <laughs> sod doing it anyway, but yeah. Um, at one point, he passes what looked like a hairy, disheveled-looking homeless man with a peg leg 
uh, standing all forlorn at the corner of one of these uh, treacherous turns. Um, now, Durbin at the time sort of paid it no mind and just thought it was a man who really wanted to get hit by a car because of where he was, where he was standing at that time of the day. Yeah. So he just thought, well, you know, idiot, and, and kind of drove on. Um, this wouldn't, however, be the last time um, that Gary would see the stranger. Um, he made it to a truck stop a little further down the road uh, and stopped for a, a coffee or whatever. Um, he sets off again along the I-55 and makes it over the border into Missouri. Here he stops at a, another rest area. As he pulls out of that area, he claims to have seen the old hairy man with a peg leg again, uh, this time standing on the opposite side of the road, um, just just staring at him, or at least staring in, in his uh, his direction. Creep. Exactly, yeah. Weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the sighting sent a, a shiver through uh, Durbin, and so, and so to calm himself down, he basically reasoned that the stranger must have hitched a ride to enable him to get so far ahead, um, because he would, it, it wouldn't have happened on foot, yeah, basically. Um, so that's how he kind of rationalised the the whole sort of situation. Certainly on one foot. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. One good foot. <laughs> um, so Gary Durbin would see the stranger a total of five times over the years um, in Texas, Arkansas, Missouri, Mississippi, and Florida. Um, and this oh, was wow. the so okay. gone. Yeah, yeah. They're thinking about the locations, it's a fairly all, wide spread. I mean, especially Florida is completely it's, nowhere near the others. I mean, at least the others the are going to be relatively. Well, I mean, well, relatively I close. Sort of following America, a, sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, now he gave a description um, of the stranger a little bit more, kind of in depth, um, and he says he stood at six foot five. The peg leg started just below the knee. He had very long hair, a beard. Uh, both light brown in colour, old-fashioned clothes that were ripped and torn, uh, and he carried what Gary called a little hobo pouch with him. A hobo pouch? No idea what that is. I presume it's some sort of like fanny pack or bum bag made out of leather or something. <laughs> I don't know. I've never a heard of a hobo pouch. pouch. I'm yeah. going to have to Google that later. Yeah, I wish I had. I, I think well, I might have done, but... I might not actually hobo pouch. It doesn't... Well, yeah, I mean, maybe go incognito or something. or Definitely your incognito. Yeah. Do it on one of the boys' uh, search history. <laughs> yeah, let's borrow your phone. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. What for? Searching up hobo pouches. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. You, you'll find out. <laughs> yeah, you'll find, yeah. yeah, you'll figure it out. <laughs> um, so, yes, that was the, the, the first one, which um, I think starts us off on on a pretty good uh, yeah. path with, with these. Um, the the next one... It's, funny, it's one of those on. ones where... It, sorry. It, it, yeah, go it's on. one of those ones where... She, they're appearing human-like, potentially. Yeah, so it draws back to that initial the, uh, origin. Hold, hold the hook. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And it was it's normally around, you know, wooded areas, you know, mountainous areas, you know, along these, you know, eye roads or motorways, I guess they are, um, yeah. as over here. Um, so, yeah, and we'll, we'll find out through, you know, all of the encounters that I'll go through that they are all seen in the same sort of areas. So there's that consistency. Uh, what to the it. same being sort of thing? I don't necessarily know if it's the same if it's the same stranger or, or creature, but in, in terms of um, not location, but uh, like surroundings. So it'll be dark, it'll be wooded, a lot, oh, lot, a lot of greenery, the environmental, yeah, sort of environmental. Element, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, it could well be this. I mean, if it is more along the spiritual side and it, it takes a more human form when it presents itself, then yeah, I guess it could be the same same being i mean the, the descriptions certainly stack up to suggest mm. that but yeah when, you, when you've only got one good leg and this is traveling between states quite quickly <laughs> it, it does sort of beg a belief but you know. maybe not a skip maybe not a jump well exactly yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly um now the, the next one that i found uh, occurred a couple of years later in 1983 um involves a woman known only as barb uh, from De Plain, illinois um, who had a frightening encounter with a seemingly unknown creature. Uh, Barb went on a road trip to visit her sister in Alabama, and she got there with that incident, and that's the story. Oh, right. No, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Oh, um, uh, it's, it's a short, right yeah, it's a short one. Um, <laughs> now, upon meeting her sister, the two went 
to uh, a local mall, or certainly that was their plan. Uh, it was located on the I-20 and I-59 by Green Pond in Alabama, if that means anything to our uh, American listeners. Okay. Um, on their way, they passed a wild-looking man by the side of the road. He was six feet in height, uh, with very long hair, with clothes that looked like they'd been dragged by a car, uh, which is quite specific. Mm. Um, the stranger also had a wooden peg leg. Now, shaken by the encounter, the two sisters changed their plans and instead went to a local coffee shop to compose themselves. Barb later described the feeling of seeing the stranger as less evil and more of a warning. Mm. She felt the appearance was uh, warning them of a, a tragedy that had either happened or was, was going to happen. That's interesting. Yeah, which is, kind of ties back to um, sort of the, the Mothman. Yeah, the whole and harbinger sort of, of yeah. something going wrong, or even yeah, a warning like a, or like cause a banshee or, of it. or something. Yeah, like banshee that. No, as well. No screaming, no crying or anything yeah. like that. But much along those lines. Appearance. And again, all all a collective um, sort of creature, aren't they? You, mm. know, you know, from what we're finding. Um, but later that evening, um, having returned hours earlier than originally planned, uh, Barb's sister received a call telling her that her son had fallen from a tree, and uh, badly broke his arm and they were able to off the back of that they were obviously able to go and you know collect her son and take him straight to the uh the er yeah to, of course because in 83 there, there wouldn't have been mobile phones or anything no like no that. nothing so like they that. would have had to so, be at the phone yeah ready to answer it and if they wow. had stuck to their original plan and gone to the mall the chances are they still would have been there when the, the call was was coming into her home so I think it may well have been in, in hindsight, but Barb certainly looks back at it as a, as a warning, as though they were supposed to return home at that time, you know, to receive that call yeah. to take the son to, you know, the, the ER uh, or, or hospital, whatever. Um, and because apparently the injury could have been a lot worse had they not tended to him, you know, kind of when they also did. Also, it must have been a big, big so break. So it was a big then. break. Yeah, I think in the book it details that it was like two or, th- like two or three separate breaks in the one arm or something. And if it had been left any longer, it could have caused, you know, I don't know about amputation or whatever, well, it, but it certainly would have caused issues must with have been healing. Like a compound and, fracture that where it, it, you know, it comes out. Yeah, quite. Po- yeah, I don't remember that detail, but yeah, quite possibly. That's oh, certainly well, what they alluded severe, to anyway. Then, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's quite a, a biggie. So I think that's why she, she sort of calls back to it being more of a, you know, kind of a warning because they they didn't necessarily feel, you know, sort of scared or that it was an evil presence, but uh, and enough to change their plans. Yeah but not that's weird so yeah but so that, 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 I quite like that element again that kind of claws back to maybe the spiritual side of, of these beings and, and that kind of enforcing that kind of feeling mm. that you know you need to change your plans you need to you know something's happened or whatever so yeah I quite um, yeah I quite like that one uh, a, a short uh, a sort of slightly shorter one um, this was a little bit more recent in the uh, winter of 98 uh, a trucker who called himself Gunslinger, <laughs> and that's the only name that he gives, <laughs> so, which is great. Um, I think they, we should all he, do that. He gave himself I, that name. I think the way it's it's written, I think he is a self-proclaimed nickname, yeah. Um, <laughs> I suppose truckers don't have many friends, do they? Well, no, this guess, is it, so. yeah. So I suppose they have to give themselves nicknames, I guess. Love um, it. But uh, yeah, he, he was headed for Chicago, Illinois, along the I-255, he was about 12 to 14 miles from Alton, Illinois, when he saw a large, unkept hairy man uh, in worn-out clothes hobbling along the side of the road. Um, so what was the appearance of the stranger in at this particular location that he slowed down his truck? Um, he slowed down enough to sort of pull up alongside the, the, the stranger, got off full look at him, and uh, and bolted. He thought, nope. <laughs> oh, a straight up no. Nope. Yeah, it was a straight up no. And he, yeah, he, he sped up, carried on going and, you know, sort of didn't look back. But it, there was enough of this guy's appearance that made old gunslinger, um, you know, poo his pants and, uh, and hightail it. Guy then, eh? Exactly, yeah. Hey, slinger. Hightail it out of there. Um, and yeah, and he, 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 apparently he was sort of shocked, shell-shocked by the, you know, the kind That's of the uh, encounter well. and it affected his, you know, sort of driving, you know, 
for sort of the you know the years to come whenever he drove either down that same route or a similar route you know he'd always be sort of looking at the side of the road for a you know kind mm. of an individual or or something so it, it had quite this a this is something that, that's cropped impact. up a lot isn't it where people have interacted with something or not even interacted just seen yeah. something and it's made them feel weird just the sight of it nothing's happened no but just the just sight enough of it, of it yeah is it's, enough to send them, give them the willies, and like, yeah, go. Exactly. Oh, that's, that's, I'm going the other way. Nope. <laughs> yeah, straight <laughs> yeah. up. No, no. Nope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's weird. Yeah, very weird. But um, he he gives also quite a um, compelling description. Uh, basically, he said that the stranger was between six and seven feet tall, long hair, a beard, a wooden peg leg, peg leg, and uh, torn clothes. So uh, there's the peg a, leg again. Yeah. So aside from the others that are pretty on the nose, that's the one specific that seems to be, uh, you know, and it's spanning cropping over, up over in, times in all of as them. well, isn't it? So, th- so the first one must have been in like the the late seventies, uh, uh, with uh, early the trucker. So they're all. So the first two were early eighties, and then this one was ninety eight. So, well, there's a bit of time yeah. span in that. Yeah, and yeah. That's uh, this is only three out of the eleven or twelve encounters that, um, that feature this. this that Coleman, being. yeah, that, that, that Coleman sort of um, puts in his in his book, but Sweet. they're all of the same being, um, but obviously different different locations around sort See, of Middle it's America. Not, it's not like what you'd expect. Like again, I've still got this image in my head of like a like traditional sort of troll. Yeah, sort of Billy thing. Goat's Gruff sort of yeah. mountain trolls yeah, that like, live under bridges yeah, and like something out of Skyrim or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, or, yeah World that's of Warcraft. What, that that's kind what of thing. In my head. But yeah, that sounds yeah. more just like a, a weird old man, doesn't it? Yeah, really, really. Yeah. But it's this idea. Just that, a hobo, basically. Yeah. Isn't it? Just a, a what like like traveller. What like? Oh, call he's it? got a pouch for it. So he's got a pouch. Yeah, got yeah a absolutely. Hobo pouch, so he must be a hobo. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's this idea that people get this weird feeling when they look at it. It's well, yeah, it's, it's weird. But uh, after all of the encounters and meeting with these various people, um, Jerry Coleman actually, I think it's in the book, surmises that the sightings were of a mystical being that served as a protector or omen of possible bad fortune, um, and it's actually um, part of a, what I think he might have coined a road troll phenomenon. In, road uh, it, troll, yeah, road troll phenomena in in Middle America, and I, 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 that's interesting. I think he's credited for you know sort of coining that. I, I, I could be wrong, but um, that's where I first sort of heard it oh. in, in in his book. And he says that the the appearance of the road troll may be a, a benevolent occurrence, somehow uh, subverting some accident that would have otherwise occurred. That's interesting, and that's his kind of summation after. Talking to these sort of, you know, a dozen incredible, though, people, the eleven different people on several different occasions. Yeah, I've seen the same. I've seen the guy, same thing. Same thing. Same creature. Got the, got yeah. the same feelings as well. Yeah, yeah. That's very odd. And I, you know, and that's why I quite liked it because it wasn't where I expected to go. I expected to be, you know, in the mountains of Scandinavia somewhere, like, like, in like Sweden sort of or thing. yeah, like, exactly. You hear, you hear yeah, it, like breathing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like oh, you know, weird. someone living in a cabin in the mountains in in like Sweden or something or you know in Iceland mm. or whatever and they yeah hear banging on their wall or hear like a, a noise which is, or which is a Bigfoot sort of thing yeah exactly. so maybe even like that that phenomena that that description that mm. people get in those Bigfoot stories yeah it's taken over from troll stories yeah, quite possibly or yeah or I think one has sort of bled into the other or, or vice versa you know I, I don't or the I'm big not, man's a troll or the big man is a troll yeah um which and it's funny you mention that because I do actually have a, a story about that or sort of certainly along those lines oh, yeah. which uh which may or may not take us back to uh good old west virginia oh, Mountain Mama. <laughs> the Mountain Excellent. Mama. absolutely but um yeah i've got a uh, got quite an interesting one to to sort of go through uh before we get to that like i say it's been a while since we've been in west virginia it's, isn't it? it's been, been a quite while a few episodes it has and I, I won't i won't lie i did deliberately google <laughs> trolls in west virginia <laughs> in the hope that something <laughs> would come up and uh yeah, in that respect, I struck gold. Excellent. It, it's, yeah, you'll, Let's go, baby. You'll like it. You'll like it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, just a teaser for now, because I'm going to go through uh, through another one, um, which which kind of harpers back to a couple of the references that you mentioned earlier, um, you know, in, in particular, the, the small stature um, and the, the frozen reference. Um, okay. In terms of like the sort of the numbers and, and whatnot. Um, but this, uh, this occurred a little... A little while ago now, 1919, in Barron County, Wisconsin, um, and involved a young lad named uh, Harry Anderson. 
Um, now, Harry and his family um, were going out for a drive in their new family car, which is a Model T Ford. Um, it was a uh, relaxing summer evening, and the family didn't have a destination in mind. They just wanted to travel the back roads and were seemingly happy in uh, in each other's company, as goes his encounter. <laughs> Sounds fucking horrendous to me, to be honest. But <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. um, but to each their own. <laughs> oh, indeed. <laughs> they, are, they are driving until at least 10 p.m. at night and the father decides to turn around and, and start driving home. On the way back to their home, the car started to encounter problems. Um, the car comes to a complete stop in complete darkness in the middle of Highway 25. Um, they determined that the car needed oil, so Harry's dad sent him up the road to find a farmer who would be willing to spare some oil. Well, they weren't calling out the AA or, or AAA. No, they nothing. Call it out there. No, nothing like that. And uh, it's yeah, it's quite quite interesting that you know you're in the arsehole of nowhere pitch black and you send i mean th- th- his age at the time varied between i think 12 15 and 19 but either way he was a young lad what, what do you mean like well cause it pitch black you're in the middle of nowhere and your dad sends you off into the unknown with a jerry yeah, no, can no, to... I mean, no, I mean, yeah i get that the ages <laughs> yeah so in his story i think he he says he was around 12 but then there's another article where they're talking to him, and I think he's 19 at the time of giving of, of talking to this article. And then the, I can't remember where, but there was reference somewhere that he was about 15, 16. So it's quite a, a varied, wow, okay, that's odd, varied age. But I think in his own encounter, I think he, I think he says he was around 12, 13. I think if I remember rightly. So, but he says a young guy, hmm. either way. But, but yeah, 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 I get what you're saying. It's, yeah, it's odd. Right, go on, boy. Go on, off your yeah, pop. Off your pop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Best of luck. <laughs> yeah. Come back when you when you <laughs> yeah. got the oil. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's pretty much Don't it. Don't return until. Exactly. Um, after a, a fair trek down this road, Harry does come to a, a farmhouse off in the distance. He cuts across the farmer's field. He approaches the house and he, you know he, he gets the uh, gets the oil. Um, now, obviously, there was obviously a lot more to that part of the story, but. For our purposes, we didn't need to know that. But time. He basically finds a farmer, gets the oil, starts heading back. As a chin wag. Yeah, exactly. Um, so Harry gets back to Highway 25 and heads back towards the, the car. Now, off in the distance, he spots an odd uh, figure moving towards him. Now, he drops the oil can and strains his eyes in that direction to try and see what it is. Now, from out of the darkness and moving directly towards him was what he described as 20 strange-looking little men. Uh, panicked, he jumped off the road and hid behind a tree. Uh, whilst these unusual creatures made their way uh, past him without knowing that he was there. So he managed to sort of get out of sight, seemingly. Um, now, they all walked in single file and were described as bald, small, uh, sorry, bald, small as a child, uh, with torn, dishevelled clothing held up by braces, which is oddly specific. Very specific. Yeah. Are they singing by any chance? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh. You know, funnily enough, they were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You joke. Well, really? And I had the same thought. Um, now, they were singing. It wasn't. It wasn't. Hi ho. <laughs> oh, okay. Gotcha. But, um, oh, I just wish we'll think it. Not far. It? I mean, not far off it, but uh, it wasn't. Um, off to work they were going. Oh, but right. So as the little trolls um, marched on, they broke into song simultaneously and it went a little something like this. <coughs> me, 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 me. <laughs> um, we <laughs> Get on with it, man. Get on with it. Put your teeth in. Uh, right, so it went like this. We won't stop fighting till the end of the war in 1994, sound off one two, sound off three four, detail one two three four, one two three four. <clears throat> were, Which, they, were they fronted by Sergeant Gunnery Hartman? Yeah, well, I did think, yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. <laughs> I was expecting them to say, yeah, they had sort of drill sergeant in, ahead of them, yeah. War. Yeah, in 1994. So the war is going to end in 94. Yeah. 100 odd, 80 odd years after the yeah. encounter. 1919. Yeah. yeah. That's weird. Which, yeah. What war is that then? I, I, well, I don't know. I, I think it would probably hopper back to that great 
uh, Crane oh. and uh, Pygmy War. It's got to be. The trolls had the, the trolls had a go, well. didn't they? Yeah. The Battle of the Five Armies. <laughs> <laughs> the Pygmies, the trolls. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, it occurred, Peter Jackson had it all wrong. <laughs> it occurred at the Lonely Mountain. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's weird. Yeah. And it, yeah. So. The, but it, the thing is, that it sounds like there's sound off and all of that. That's, that's Marines. That's military, isn't it? That's yeah, Marines. Like the Marines sort of thing. Yeah. I don't know, but I've been told. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Yeah, blimey. Yeah, right. very, so yeah, very odd. And I guess 1919. What's that? What's that's after the I don't breakout know. of First World War? So maybe that type of military I don't um, know. I mean, sort the, of marching would have been about, seen quite often. Well, I guess. the thing is, whenever I whenever I hear that sort of marching songs, it always reminds me of like the Vietnam. For films that I've yeah, seen. Yeah, no, I mean, exactly. What I was going to say, you know, it takes then, me back to like anything um, after that. Full Metal Jacket. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah, Vietnam. Yeah. And uh, like, yeah, that's odd. Yeah, so which was obviously know, far, which was a long time after this encounter. A hell of a, yeah, yeah. at least 50 years at the very yeah. least. Um, yeah. Yeah, about yeah, 40, 40, 40, 40 odd years. years. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, which is weird. I don't know enough about American military history no, to, I don't. to know when the Marines were formed. No, I don't. So, but no, it was oddly specific in its wording um and it, it, i could only sort of surmise that maybe you know training camps or something around wisconsin mm. soldiers would march through you know the you know the towns or the mountains chanting them sort of songs and that's what maybe influenced him in his story assuming it's not true of course yeah of course. um but uh so they, they continued their march uh past um harry behind the tree uh, until they disappeared um, into the darkness, uh, approaching another tree line uh, that was a bit sort of further ahead. Uh, the song eventually finished before they fully disappeared, and they returned to a quiet chatter amongst themselves, hmm. which uh, in itself was quite, um, yeah, was was quite interesting. Yeah, the whole thing about the war ending in '94. <coughs> yeah. That's that's strange. Yeah, very bizarre. Um, and yeah, you know, again, a specific year. Uh, yeah. Which, I, which I quite like. I, I quite like. It adds a sort of bit of realism, or you know, a bit of credence for yeah, me maybe that they, got they like picked. The, maybe they got the Mayan calendar or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, now, obviously, the story does continue far beyond that, but for the purposes of what we needed to discuss, I didn't. Yeah, obviously, didn't want enough. to go through it. Yeah. But basically, Harry returns to the car after this encounter, gives his dad the oil can, and they get their car moving. On the journey back home, um, he tells his dad of the encounter, but none of his family saw or heard these twenty oh, course, little yeah, men. They were coming, but from they would where have come. Was going. Yeah, they would have come from that direction. So, yeah, just interesting that none of the family um, bring saw that it. Up. Yeah, exactly. You yeah, yeah. see twenty odd trolls yeah. singing as they went by. Did you? Yeah, you'd be like, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're going straight to bed. Or maybe they were cloaking. <laughs> or maybe. They were cloaking, which we've uh, yeah established we've, that some established of these they sort can of do possibly could do yeah. Um, but one thing I thought was worth mentioning, which again, like I said at the start, sort of ties into what you mentioned about you know cultures traveling and you know bringing their stories and, and mm. folklores and that with them. Um, the early uh, German, Icelandic, and Norwegian immigrants first settled in Wisconsin. Um, so right. it's quite possible that they would have brought their story stories of, you know, trolls with them, and then it in itself embedded within, you know, Wisconsin, you know, sort of folklore, yeah. which could have quite easily, obviously, manifested itself into its own legend within that part of the world, or which certainly we, gave evidence. Which to, is something that we've discussed before with regards to the the idea of the tulpa, the, yes, the, the yeah. thought form. Yeah. Um. So it's almost like. Does the is it the phenomena that is uh, manifesting as these trolls? Is it is it manifesting as a result of the legends and the stories that come from the cultures of the people, mm. or is it the other way around? Are the cult, yeah. are the legends and the cultures generated <clears throat> because of these beings? Exactly. Yeah. It's weird. Like, which one actually yeah. comes first? Like, I can understand like this the idea that the the migratory legends mm. as such they bring their legends but do they then yeah. also bring the entities with them as well well that's the thing is it yeah is it the written word and is it the the spoken story that they bring or yeah as you rightly say do they somehow transfer the actual entity itself which then embeds into this new and is that why some of these take on different forms 
you know different representations because they change based on the surrounding area the culture yeah. the i don't know part of the world the I don't know, particular religion that it might have been attached to you know so yeah, there could be all these there's a lot of similarities with mm. um because in my research i did find similarities with other beings and other creatures from different parts of the world you know exactly yeah. well, like banshee goblin fairy yeah you know, they've all got similarities between them but more so to do with um the similarities of trolls and other beings from yeah. from across the world but only this is the weird part only in the northern hemisphere the yes southern yeah, hemisphere, saying, yeah, i didn't yeah. i didn't find anything no, in the southern hemisphere that no. matched the the description of these sort of things yeah. um not really no not that i odd. could find anyway i mean yeah nothing and you'd imagine if you know if anywhere scotland would probably with you know the vast mountain ranges and yeah. wilderness and whatever that if if there was going to be anything it well, would be that be part of the world the you know, especially as you um referenced earlier the that they and, yeah and the exactly yeah. yeah you're right the northernmost part so you would have thought it would have traveled you know south from there but seemingly it doesn't seem to unless as i, as I was saying that, that they did transfer their 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 folklores and their legends mm. And as they travelled, you know, further down, it eventually came to what we know as the Banshee and the Goblins and the Potentially, Fae I and, mean, well, I know, you know that did it historically, take um, in in Scotland, when when the Norwegians and what well, the, the the Scandinavians mm. came here, the, the north of the border mm. was very difficult for them to actually conquer. Yeah, because right. at the time it was it was populated by um, a group of people known as the the Picts, right, and they were very much resistant to yeah anything coming in so even though the the, the scandinavians took over a large swathe of of england mm. specifically yeah and um and coming in into ireland as well scotland yeah. for them it seems was held off know, a bit longer yeah well a lot longer <laughs> yeah. like that the, the, they didn't get a chance yeah. sort of thing mm. um so that potentially might be where yeah, that block possibly. comes from that's why it's stopped yeah, yeah. The, the scottish didn't surrender sort of thing yeah they yeah, had exactly. their freedom they did. They did have their freedom. <laughs> <laughs> they did absolutely. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, the the next one, um, the, the next one that I wanted to go into was, you know, as I promised uh, earlier, yes. um, a wearing a, a very specific t shirt for this story as well. Absolutely, yeah, because we, we do, do heart, love West Virginia. West, absolutely, um, find it in the merch store, guys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, details to follow later. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and and th but this is actually again, you know, much like everything in in West Virginia, it is its own phenomena, um, mm. known as the Grafton Monster, or Grafton Monster. This popped up actually the other day on one of my crypto pages oh, really? that, I, that I follow on Facebook. Right. Yeah, okay. and he came up with like the region and like you know we got like the the, the map with the yeah. numbers. And oh, okay. Then down in the bottom corner, it tells you what yeah. it is. And number nineteen was the Grafton Monster. Right, no yeah. way, yeah, there you go. That's weird. Yeah. Um, now, this is uh, described as a cross between Bigfoot and a troll. Um, it is a hairless, skulking, upright humanoid. So, basically, a shaved Bigfoot. <laughs> Not a shaved monkey. <laughs> Not then. a shaved monkey this time, a shaved Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> a waxed Sasquatch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I love it. Waxed Sasquatch. Yeah, exactly. Um, Brilliant. It fears, it fears loud noises <laughs> and it eats only meat. Uh, and of course, its uh, its base or its origin is um, Grafton, West Virginia. So we're we're back there, baby. Oh, was, oh mate, <laughs> love it. <laughs> you got it, haven't you? Yep. Um, now with I love it. <laughs> um, now with this uh, with this uh, sort of creature, they are both males and females uh, of the uh, of the species, um, ranging from six hundred pounds at their lightest to around eight hundred or nine hundred pounds at their heaviest. Um, now, sorry, ladies, but it is believed that the female uh, Grafton monster is heavier than the male, oh. getting up to about nine hundred pounds. Oh, yeah, oh, big girl. It was the, yeah, exactly, yeah, big girl. And uh, whereas the men only get to about eight hundred, so not far off. Oh, not but really. yeah, well, it happens a couple of times. You know, it happens, happens to in, the best in, of us, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. in the, in the <laughs> human, absolutely, the human nature, <laughs> and also the animal kingdom as well. Exactly so. right. Don't feel too disheartened. It's just nature. It's just nature. <laughs> it is. Um, now they're muscular and lean in the spring, and podgier in the winter. Much no, like no, us. Much like me, yeah, I know yeah, all about that. Yeah. yeah, I'm getting my winter coat as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, now, they can also um, range anywhere between six and nine feet tall. Uh, they live in uh, in uh, dense woodland around Grafton, um, but have been known to nest as far as Michigan. That's quite, yeah, which that's is, quite far, Again, really, it's quite a it? distance. I mean, my, my geography is bad at the best of times, but I'm pretty sure that they're not that close to one another. <laughs> no. <laughs> like no they are really. quite... There's there's a few state lines in between them. That's yeah, for sure. a fair few. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, that's in, yeah but again, it's that whole region there, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. The Appalachians and you know, yeah, all of that mammoth cave system. Mammoth cave system. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, and all that uh, quartz under the ground. Yes, yeah. those quartz deposits, mate. <laughs> yeah, watch out for them. Absolutely. Um, now there was a a sort of a fairly brief sighting. Um, which I thought just to you know add a bit of uh, variety, I'd I'd go through. Mm-hmm. Um, it occurred at uh, eleven p.m. on June sixteenth, nineteen sixty-five. So right in the heart of that blip, yeah, in all the West Virginia with Men on. in Black and Mothman and yeah, everything else. So yeah, right in the the heart Flatwoods of it. And Flatwoods, Flatwoods, well, Flatwoods as well, yeah. Flatwoods as well, yeah. Um, and this involved a chap named uh, Robert Cockrell. Um, a young reporter for the Grafton Sentinel. Mm. Uh, he was heading home on Riverside Drive, uh, and in a hurry, he was speeding down the dark, winding roads. Suddenly, his headlights illuminate a huge white creature on the right-hand side of the road, um, standing on a cleared-off section of grass. It was around seven feet tall, hairless, and had pale, shiny skin, uh, or silvery skin. Um Showing no fear, it stayed motionless as it stared at him as he made the approach and you know eventually sort of drove past. He drove home uh, even faster and told two friends of the encounter. They all returned to the site not long after and searched for over an hour. And all they could find was basically trampled grass around around that area. So, so sort oh, so of like physical evidence. Yeah, physical evidence that, that something, something had there. been there, yeah. Um as they were leaving, though, all they they all heard a um, low, eerie whistling sound that seemed to follow them on their search, Ooh. and that apparently took them from the sort of the edge of the road, across the uh, the sort of the clearing where the the creature was seen, and then mm. down to uh, like a um, like a little river bank or like a, a stream, gotcha. and then they walked along the stream, sort of away from where they'd sort of pulled up. So it was all, along all that point. They heard just this really low, eerie kind of Whistle. whistling that, that kind of mm. like followed them. That's weird. Which is yeah, which is which is weird. Yeah. Um, now, yeah. So they they heard yeah, followed them on their, their search. Um, he was reluctant to tell his story because of his profession and also because of the I guess the outrageousness of of what they'd seen. Yeah. Um, but two days later, he appeared in an article. Uh, and was published in the local newspaper. Now, whether that was his paper or whether it was another one, I don't know. But it, it basically sparked a monster hunt uh, that was about 100 people strong. And it was like how you see in the old films and the cartoons. They were all had pitchforks torches and, and pitchforks. torches and all of that. Yeah, all, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it was. That's how it was described oh, anyway. Um, that went on, I think, over an evening um, so that until the following day. Um, and then a few days after that, there was another article in the same paper that basically said it was all just a hoax. So it was all a fuss over nothing, gotcha. as you'd expect. As they always do. As they? you'd expect yeah. when they uh, when they cover it up. <laughs> um, the one too many times, guys. One exactly. Too many times. Absolutely. So yeah. So that was uh, yeah. So that was that one. So no um, no real sort of scary encounter per se. But uh, I guess what happened when they went to that site was um, pretty unsettling. With yeah, like the whistling that. And it, like I said, oh, as they say, it tended to follow, you know, follow them, them well. on their search until they returned, presumably to their car. Well, it so, could have been, could have been a shaved Bigfoot. It, it could have been or a waxed Sasquatch. Yeah. <laughs> it could have been an emulated Yeti. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of imac on a Yeti. <laughs> you never know. Who knows? The you possibilities know. are oh, endless. They really are yeah. endless. <laughs> <laughs> but we will leave it there that's for sure. that we will yeah <laughs> yeah that that we will um but yeah that's interesting though <clears throat> but yeah, yeah that, that kind of sounds more like the the idea of like the that the the bit the trolls from skyrim 
that's yes. kind of yeah, yeah, what, yeah. if anyone that has played it they kind of get yeah. the idea of it it's like a bit more of like an ape sort of thing yeah exactly yeah humanoid. an upright humanoid yeah. yeah but this one yeah seemingly was was hairless and about seven foot tall so you know pretty much like oh, we joke but you know you imagine taking a big foot yeah and shaving it and you've got the grafton monster <laughs> Could be a mangy woodwose. <laughs> it could be a mangy woodwose. Yeah, it could be. It could be a plucked woodwose. Well, wood wood <laughs> well, at least it wasn't an owl. Exactly. Thank, that, God, you know, yeah, thank, thank goodness, goodness it for wasn't that. Wasn't an owl. Yeah. Dear oh Lord. Yeah. Um, the but owl uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, they do. Funny yeah. enough. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, yeah, that's me and the uh, the sightings and uh, encounters cool. and yeah, Found some just, good ones there. Eh? Yeah, they were good. I thought what surprised me and what I quite liked is that it did take me away from what I thought was going to be the obvious, mm. as I said earlier. And, you know, we end up back in, you know, the US of A and uh, our beloved uh, West Virginia. Um, and, yes, uh, yeah, no, I, th- I thought they were they were good. They were certainly more compelling than the, than the others. Because it all just would have been like the poems or the, you know, the mm. folklores of, you know, of, of Scandinavia, which all much of a muchness. But I, I, I couldn't really see anything outside of that. Um, not saying they don't exist, but no. they they didn't certainly they didn't come to the forefront. These were the ones that kind of captured my attention, really. So I thought That's I'd, cool. uh, yeah, I thought I'd uh, thought I'd bring them. But yeah, have you got anything that you want to cover? Yeah, I guess so. Actually, go, yeah, or? yeah, I did actually. Yeah, because yeah. because I, I did mention previously about finding similar sort of legends. That's right. That it's more so based on the um, like the morality side mm. of things and and the potential of cannibalism. Okay, and being yeah, turned yeah. into mm. something. So, um, and again, it was was all in like the the northern hemisphere. Um, the one that I found that was fairly similar was um, I found one in Russia that the Leshy, which was right. something that we brought up. Yeah, in our first recognise that. With yeah, the big the Bigfoot man. one. Yeah, yeah. Um, mostly abducts humans, mainly children, and has been known to eat them yeah. as well. Um, the other one that I found was a Kitsune, that was um, a legend from Japan. Um, it also shares one from Korea, which is the Kumio, and the one in Chinese as well, which is the Huli Jin. I'm probably right. pronouncing that one. Quite possibly. Yeah. So in, in <laughs> Korea and Japan, uh, Kumio, or Kitsune, um, uses a marble carried in its mouth to steal wisdom from humans. Which is odd. Okay. It's probably yeah. some sort of, it's probably something lost in translation now, I think. Yeah, quite possibly. Um, but usually through a kiss. Now, this is where it gets right, okay, weird, yeah. right? So, this is the. the I mean, concept. we've all kissed some trolls in our lifetime, haven't we? Oh, <laughs> at the end of the night. <laughs> yeah. When the lights come when on. When the lights come on. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, Paul Whitehouse, isn't it? Sorry, girls. No monsters. <laughs> yeah. Boy, off you go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Kevin and Perry. Yeah. Kevin and Perry. Hello, Ladios. Hello, Ladios. <laughs> Put the change. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the idea it's the idea of the fox spirit. Yes, um, is it can take human form at the age of a hundred years, right? Um, and it can take the uh, it usually takes human shape of a female as well. Right. So okay. It, it, however, the fox spirit requires the use of a human skull to take uh, that it places on its head in order to transform into a human, and it's also known to devour the human in order to take its shape as well. Right. Okay. Which is weird. Um, but it's also uh, the victim of the fox spirit can also become a fox spirit as well. Right, okay. So it's this idea that yeah, almost like... You um, are what you eat. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly in the fox spirit yeah. case, yeah, it yeah. really is. You've got to be careful who you eat. Yeah, exactly. That's for yeah. sure. Um, <laughs> but staying in Japan, I found another one. It yeah. was the Yamalba or Yam- Yamuawa. Yama Uba. Right, okay. Yama Uba. Yeah. Um, they're generally considered to be an old woman that has been marginalized by society and forced yeah. out into the mountains, which is a story. Again, we've heard yeah, we've heard that before, quite yeah. Quite often. Um, but she does have a penchant for eating human flesh. Which is probably why she got kicked out and sent it, to the forest. <laughs> it's a very good move by the society, <laughs> really. So, among many tales, uh, yeah. there is one of uh, a Yama Uba um, who offers shelter to a young woman about to give birth right um while secretly planning to eat her baby mm-hmm. and in another she's actually looking to eat her as well but there's also um a story where she goes into a village um goes into their homes 
eats the children whilst their mothers are away. Okay. And it's said that um, those that see the Yamuba are also destined, and that are, they see it, but they survive. Right. They're destined to become the Yamuba. Right. I'm probably saying that word wrong. It doesn't sound right. But right. <laughs> um, but what's also really weird is um, they have mouths underneath their hair. So they have long like traits hidden. in hair. Right, okay. So they're hidden underneath her hair. So is it just that their that their face is is hidden? Well, in or the depictions on the I've back got, of their just, head. Okay, or on, the, on the back of their hidden head. Hidden under their head un- somewhere. The scalp. I don't right, know. Okay. Maybe, I don't know. It's, it's very odd. Yeah. Well, I mean, only because, just harping back to the, the road uh, troll um, With the hair over its face. The, the long hair was typically over its face, presumably to, to sort of protect its... Uh, you know, identity or to, you know, sort of shield its its actual form. So when yeah. you say under the hair, does it just yeah, simply weird, mean that? It? Or could it actually be, as you I say, like over, their, actually, yeah. over their, their skull or scalp? Very odd. But yeah. I also want, I also came across the one you mentioned earlier, the Wendigo. Ah, yes. So it's the idea yeah, yeah. that, you know, you can um, become a Wendigo through a lack of morality. Yes. Um, so it's specifically greed and mm. also eating yeah. human flesh. So yeah. if you, you know, because it's the idea where the Wendigo comes from. It comes from these very, very harsh environments where you've yeah. got to suffer these awfully long winters. Yeah. And awfully harsh winters. Yeah. That if you succumb to immorality mm. and eat human flesh, you're yeah. destined you're to You're destined to walk the earth become forever one. eating it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. Was, was a bit weird quite harrowing really yeah these sort of stories though of yeah. there being a woodland creature or mm. entity or something mm. like this that devours the humans or you are destined to become one of them yeah so technically it was almost like there's a bit of cannibalism involved yeah. in that only ever happened in like only ever seen them in the northern hemisphere it's like yeah so it's there are like migratory legends and, and such that have potentially over thousands and thousands of years yeah. tribes interacting with each other mm. telling different stories making these yeah potentially these creatures in birthing these creatures into into existence with these stories yeah yeah it's very odd yeah it's very peculiar yeah but um no it's, but it's interesting though that mm. it, again we sort of harper back to to that you know sort of theory that you can you know sort of talk something into existence and with the introduction of other cultures and you know other stories folklores legends and everything else mm. do they sort of manifest themselves you know to such a point yeah that they do actually become you know you know become real this is the thing i suppose i'm going to get off the fence then really because it's yeah i guess it's about like, time <laughs> yeah it's about that time isn't it? <laughs> so i think that these sort of things do exist Yes, and they're not necessarily separate from. This is something that I'm starting to realise is that the stories create these entities that create these these creatures. Yeah, and if these stories are forgotten, these creatures are forgotten as well. Yeah, um, yeah, true. But there's definitely a. It's not just um, people's imagination or anything like that because. There's clearly there's some with regards to the stories that you found. Yeah, there's something that these creatures do mm. that makes people feel uneasy. Yeah, there's an emotional attachment, you know, to them, whether it be positive or or negative. Yeah, I mean the the thing is, um, I've I've said it before. We as humans, we see a very very narrow spectrum of light mm. to what actually exists. Yeah, we also hear. A very very narrow spectrum of sound. Yeah, you know that there's there's so much more to sound that we really don't understand in the mainstream at the very yeah. least. And but we know the, there there are pitches and, and tones that we know we can't hear or you yeah, know well, identify yeah. because of the decibel yeah, they, levels they even, or whatever they it is. Utilize it in um, certain shops now that um, there's a tone that teenagers don't like. So when right. you're at a certain point of development in your right. growth, yeah. there's a there's a pitch that makes you feel uneasy, makes you feel right. a bit sick. Right. And okay. there's some places, even in like in the UK, that have actually utilised this technology to stop kids from hanging outside their their shops, like really? you know after school and all that yeah, sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. So this was something that I found that was quite interesting. And I have to get me that soundbite. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, really. I've got on a boom box. <laughs> Especially around your way yeah, exactly. as well, Get it? lost. Yeah. See you later. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah. bet you could put it out on Halloween and all, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course you are. No, you've said it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, so because uh, I, I, previously I've looked at these sort of things and the idea of um, of infrasound. So yes. infrasound is those um, it's the pitches and that, that we can't necessarily hear. But you feel but it. But you feel it. Yeah. So it's along the same sort of lines as when you when you're at um, a club or something like that and you're right next to the bass speaker mm. you might not necessarily be able to hear it fully but you can feel it on your you chest feel it yeah yeah you. and that's technically the same way that infrasound works right so um infrasound in itself they they experts have been able to to manipulate it and and such and, and find a particular hertz mm. that actually invokes emotion within you right so i think it's like about 18 hurts and it invokes anger right okay which is interesting mm. but when people i can't remember what the, it was such a long time ago that i actually looked into it but it's a very low hertz a low infrasound sound yeah. that invokes fear right so what i found look like, what i found interesting about the the road troll ones mm. is that potentially this thing this mm. road troll is emitting some form of infrasound that's making people feel a certain way. We came yeah. across it with the Mothman, where John Keel yeah, kept did. going past the the TNT area. He found yeah. this little spot little that made spot, him feel yeah. really kind of like anxious and like, mm, oh my panicked goodness, and, got, yeah. yeah. And he tested it by going back and forward, yeah. and he found that it was located to a very specific mm. area. Potentially, this phenomena, these these creatures, entities, wherever they may be, yeah, they emit this sort of this, this 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 infrasound either purposefully or mm. it's just part of their existence part of their part being, of their thing yeah that and they they exist in a spectrum of light yeah that we can't necessarily see no um not all the time at the very least no exactly yeah but if but like for instance maybe cameras pick up on this light that we can't see yeah, possibly and yeah you know, I mean, I've had a few experiences that are a bit weird when I've worked mm. on, on like a security desk yeah. and cameras have picked something up and I'm like, well, I didn't see that go by. Mm. You know, I've had yeah, stuff, yeah. moments like that previously. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think that these, the potential or the possibility that these sort of things, these manifestations, I think it's all just a phenomena. Yes, no, I think I'm yeah. getting on the same sort of lines as you have in your mm. previous, um, like getting off the off the fence, mm. where you say that it is a phenomena that's manifesting in different ways, mm. almost very much like what a lot of people think that consciousness mm. is about. So we're all this. I sound really new age right now, but <laughs> we are all one consciousness yeah. experiencing reality subjectively. Right. So, yeah. You know. It, it, so once we all essentially die our consciousness becomes one again and mm. but we've got this collective knowledge mm. of all these subjective experiences yeah so maybe the phenomena works along yeah, those sort of lines as well yeah where it's a single phenomena yeah that manifests manifests subjectively yeah. in various different forms based on who's who it's presenting itself to or who is who's looking who's looking Exactly. Oh, well, I see. Said that, didn't they? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah. It depends on who's looking. It does absolutely. Yeah, so well I think there is some truth, you know, sort of to that. And yeah, I guess I, yeah, I'd agree with you know, kind of what you're, you know, with what you're saying for the most part to get off, you know, you know, the fence for me I, again. You know, if you were to just feed off what you know, Disney told you, and you know, what pop culture references you know you saw, then you know, you you could very well you know be forgiven for thinking that it was all complete nonsense, but you know, like with a lot of these things that we've sort of jumped into, you know, you 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 go back to the origins, you go back to kind of the real world experiences and, you know, and, and sightings. And it's hard to, you know, deny at least the possibility that these things do exist. And the more of these yeah. things we look into and the more similarities between them all that we find, you know, it's got to be coming from somewhere, you know, and, and yeah. it, it dates so far back, you know, that it's it's got some... It's got to have some, you know, credence to it, mm. um, and so I think that, yeah, they, for the most part, I think they do exist. I think they are probably more of a spiritual being, you know, in terms of how they kind of travel and 
you know appear you know to us or, yeah. or present themselves which is why so many there are so many encounters but with slightly different you know appearances um you know with um harry anderson who saw them as small kind of stature more yeah. like you know sort of goblins or or leprechauns i guess like dwarves and then or dwarfs yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and then the whole hi ho yeah, exactly yeah, yeah exactly right yeah more like that and then you know other other people saw him as as a six foot hobo with a peg leg so it's about the hobo pouch and the hobo pouch <laughs> so yeah I, th- I think you know i think you're right i think a, a certain aspect of the phenomena can lend itself to you know to certainly that that theory um you know as well as them just existing as they do mm. you know i think you've got to give some thought to you know to that sort of spiritual side well, the know, legends well. come from somewhere exactly you know as i said they come from somewhere um and yeah just that that spiritual bit i think was probably the clincher for me because it, it, it ties it into a lot of the the other um cryptids that we've gone over and how they mm. either travel or present themselves um or appear to you know to us mm. um so yeah although it was quite a surprise to see that included i think that was probably for me the the sort of the, the clincher as to why i've sort of landed on the side of the yeah. fence that i have that's cool. <laughs> so again you know we're on the same same side of it we've just gone about it i think slightly different <laughs> ways <laughs> again well, i do think though that but, i don't think we're, we're kind of ju- we're getting on the same sort of track yeah with our with our thinking and not this i guess it's a theory well i guess it's a theory really because we can't really prove unless we anything. can prove it it's all just theory and and yeah mm. and yeah. thoughts or whatever yeah but beliefs. we are on the similar sort of track with it really well the more yeah. and more we look into these things i think yeah the more strange happenings we have yeah, yeah. as well that yeah there's something here there's something to it and like mm. john keel said when yeah. you start looking at this stuff it starts looking back yes exactly yeah you and know? i think and i think that's what sunday with me i think yeah sunday was probably the first for me <laughs> yeah. where they've actually looked back and been like yeah we know you're looking into us yeah <laughs> hello yeah we <laughs> see ya. yeah you can't see us no, no no yeah so that was yeah that was weird so yeah again things like that as well i think the more of those things that sort of happen Again, mm. you know, it's hard to ignore. Um, so I think, yeah, just sort of shake off the preconceived idea of, you know, what you think any of these cryptids are. Either listen to us or, you know, do your own yeah. do your own dive in and you'll soon find that there is a lot more to these than just, you know, fairy tales or, or you know, campfire stories. Or, we'll be putting a fresh whatever. roll of red string on the merch store pretty yeah, soon. exactly, yeah. For your very own purchase. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Branded red string, yeah. yeah. <laughs> With whiteboards to boot yeah, as well. Yeah, we can do whiteboards as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess uh, I guess on, on that note, it brings us to uh, the end of uh, another episode. Um, so thank you, as always, for, for joining us. Um, you know, it's much, uh, much appreciated. Um, we want to give uh, another shout-out to our Patreon, uh, Justin, Cheers, man. Thank you for Thank the you for uh, support. continued support. Yeah, as always. And uh, remember, guys, you know, you too can sign up and support your favorite podcast. Um, and, uh, you know, be like Justin. Yep, be <laughs> just like Justin. <laughs> so that's something I've never okay. thought I'd ever say. No, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Be like Justin. Be like Justin. If you're going to be anything, be like Justin. Exactly. Um, <laughs> and so to do that, all you've got to do is head to patreon.com forward slash cryptid ramblers podcast. We've made it as easy as that for you. It's that easy. Um, you'll have the choice of, at the moment, uh, two tiers uh, to pick from, um, priced at four and six pounds, um, plus VAT. Plus VAT. Just as a, a little, uh, just as a little warning, you know, for you guys. Um, I think it works yeah. out to be about one pound twenty on top of the sort of advertised price. Yeah. So it'd be. It uh, it'd be. Uh, yeah. For the for the. For the four pound, pound one, sorry, it on. would be yeah. seven pound twenty, and for yeah. the four pound one, it'd be four pound eighty. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So yeah. So there you go. There, there. The you do uh, get prices. your benefits as well for going with the the higher tier, guys. Indeed, you do. You get to see uh, these uh, see ugly these mugs. mugs. Wonderful <laughs> mugs, mate. You do. Speak for yourself. You do. <laughs> okay, I will. <laughs> yeah. To sir. Him and this ugly <laughs> mug. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. So that's. Um, Yes, that's the uh, the Patreon, and uh, yeah, any any support would be uh, greatly appreciated. Um, and on that note, also remember, guys, that we do have our merch store. Um, we can pick up your own tees, like the ones that we are beautifully modelling. Um, which, if you uh, had the Keen Rambler tier, you'd be able to see for yourself. Indeed. So just for 
Just for Justin. Just for you, mate. <laughs> uh, he's probably sick of seeing us and them now. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, so we've got more than just the tees. You know, we've got, you know, keeping current. You know, we've got face masks, um, which look like they might be making a comeback. They might have possibly, possibly. <laughs> you know, phone cases, you know, cups, everything. Hoodies to, as well, guys. Hoodies as well. Yeah, exactly right. So, so anything to hopefully tickle your fancy. Um for that just head over to uh, creatorspring.com follow the usual handle and uh, the store will be uh, will be there um and last by and by no means least um we want to also thank and give a shout out to uh, the home of cryptid ramblers podcast the uh, the nice new purpose built studio here at uh, hellfire studios um we're only 45 minutes uh, from london uh, and you can do anything from photography um to video and of course podcast content um and just for being a listener of this podcast you can benefit from the 20 percent discount simply use cryptid um at the checkout um head to uh, hellfirestudio.uk uh, for that or go to hellfirecreative.com for more info on all the uh services that are at your disposal indeed um now as we've uh we have forgotten a few times, or at least on a few previous episodes. <laughs> we even mentioned it. We even made a joke episode. of it and then forgot to do it. Forgot to yeah, do it. exactly. Yeah, typical <laughs> us. Um, we'd like to, uh, yeah, give you a, a sort of a little teaser um, as to what the topic will be of the the next uh, episode. We mentioned it briefly a couple of times um, earlier, but uh, we will be indeed covering the Wendigo. The terrifying the Wendigo. The horrifying Wendigo. Uh, another linked cryptid, uh, so keeping us on this uh, familiar journey um, that we're both um, sort of terrified and looking forward to. <laughs> it's taken a little while for us to get to this point because obviously the, the Wendigo is our logo. It is, Isn't yeah. It? So you would have thought it would have been like the first or one of the first to go over, but well, the we path had to go over big man, didn't we? We so. have to start with a big man, and uh, it took us down the path that hopefully you've uh, you've joined us on, and um, yeah. So that's what we'll be doing in uh, in the next uh, the next episode, um, and obviously shortly after that we will be doing our Halloween special. Mm-hmm. So remember, guys, get in touch with your you know creepy stories, encounters, sightings. Whether they're yours personally or whether you know of someone that's that's had one, and uh, yeah, we'd love to yeah. hear them, and uh, we'll of course read them out on on that particular episode. Yeah, and it, we'll, it doesn't matter. You can give us your name. You can remain or be anonymous. anonymous. Yep, yeah, absolutely love no problem. You. Either way, choice is yours. So uh, yeah, get in touch either on any of the socials, the uh, obvious handle. We're on Twitter, uh, Facebook, and uh, Instagram. Um, you can also email us if you choose at uh, Cryptid Rambler Podcast. At hotmail.com yep. do forget the uh s off of uh rambler Ramblers. because i spelt it wrong <laughs> <laughs> but it was too late before i noticed so oh, well, uh, yeah. it's out there now it's out it? there now yeah. yeah so yeah even Just get uh, us on the socials exactly the socials <laughs> or the uh, or the email um either way um and and right so on that note it's uh goodbye from me and it's goodbye from me and uh Be careful when you're out there, guys, because uh, you could find a uh, shaved Bigfoot in the woods. (laughs) (laughs) Or a wax Sasquatch. Or, exactly, yeah. An emulated Yeti. (laughs) Or a plucked (laughs) Woodrose.